Okay. Hello, and welcome to Myths, uh, Myths of Gaming, Episode 3, Part 2. Um, uh, we are doing the rake once again. Uh, part 2. Well, Part 2, yes. Uh, we don't actually have a picture of the rake with us right now, just because of some technical recording difficulties, so... We can't actually read the story and get the picture at the same time. Yeah. It's just... So, sucks. Uh, the only thing you can see is a text, but basically all you're doing is listening. Anyway, so, yeah, let's uh, get this started. Uh, in our last video, we talked about some of the things and myths of this so-called rake, so let's begin. From a witness in 2006. Um, three years ago, I had just returned from a trip from uh, Niagara Falls with my family for the 4th of July. We were all very exhausted after a long day of driving, so my husband and I put the kids right to bed and called the night. At about 4 a.m., I woke up thinking my hu husband had gotten up to use the restroom. I had used my moment to steal back the sheets, only to wake, wake him in the process. I apologized and told him I uh, thought he got out of bed. When he turned to face me, he gasped and pulled his feet from the end of the bed so quickly his knee almost knocked me out of the bed. He then grabbed me and said nothing. After adjusting the, to the dark for a half a second, I was able to see what caused the strange reaction. At the foot of the bed, sitting and facing away from us, there is what appeared to be a naked man or a large hairless dog for some sort of its sort. Its body position was disturbing and unnatural as it had been hit by a car or something. Ew. For some reason, I was not instant, instantly frightened by it, but was more... Can you be quiet, please? Um, um, where was I? For some reason, I was not in instantly frightened by it, but more concerned as, uh, as to its condition. At this point, I was somewhat under the assumption that we were supposed to help him. My husband was peering over his arm and knee and tucked into the fetal position, occasionally gl glancing at me before returning to the creature. In a flurry motion, the creature scrambled around uh, the side of the bed, then crawled quickly in flailing sort of the motion right along the bed until it was less than a foot from my husband's face. The creature was completely silent for about 30 seconds or probably closer to five. It seemed like a while. Just looking, uh, just looking at my husband, the creature then placed its hand on its knee and ran into the hallway. Leading, the kids, uh, leading to the kids' rooms, I screamed and ran for the light switch, planning to stop him before he hurt my children. When he got into the hallway, the light from the bedroom was enough to see it was crouching and hunched about 20 feet away. He turned around and looked directly at me, covered in blood. I flipped the switch on the wall and saw my daughter, Clara. Oh, I, got, I do not like where this is going. Uh, the creature ran down the stairs, and while my husband and I rushed to help our daughter, she was very badly injured and only spoke once more in her short life. She said, she said, My husband drove the car. My husband drove the car. Uh, wait. <laughs> My husband drove his car into a lake that night while rushing our daughter to the hospital. We did not survive. Being a small town, news got around pretty quickly. The police was were helpful at first, and the local newspaper took a lot of interest as well. However, the story was published at the local television news. Never followed up either. For several months, my son Justin and I stayed in a hotel near my parents' house, and we decided to return home. I began looking for answers myself. I eventually located a man in the next town who had a similar story. We got in contact and began, and began uh, talking about our experiences. He knew of two other people in New York who had seen the creature. We now referred to as the Rake. It took four of us about two solid years of hunting in the internet and writing letters to come up with a small collection of what we believe to be accounts of the rake. None of them uh, 
gave any details, history, or follow-up. One journal had an entry involving... One, uh, one journal had an entry of involving creature in its first three pages and never mentioned it again. A ship's log explained nothing of the encounter, saying only that they were told to leave by the rake, and it was the last entry in the log. There were, however, many instances where the creature's uh, visit was one of the series uh, of visits with the same person. Multiple people also mentioned being spoken, spoken to my daughter included. This led, le this led us to wonder if the rake had visited any of us before our last encounter. I set up a digital recorder near my bed and left it running all night. Oh God, I do not like this. Is where, where is it going? Every night for two weeks, I could tensely scan the sounds of me rolling around my bed each day when I woke up. By the end of the second week, I was quite used to the occasional sound of sweep while blurring through the recording at eight times the normal speed. This still took it almost an hour every day. On the first of the third week, I thought I heard something different. What was a shrill voice? Oh, God. It was the rake. I can't listen to it uh, long enough to even begin to transcribe it. I, ha I haven't let any anyone listen to it yet. All I know is that I've heard it before, and now I believe that it spoke when it was sitting in front of my husband. I don't remember hearing it at the time, but for some reason the voice on the recorder currently br brings me back to that moment. The thoughts that have must the thoughts that have must uh, have gone through my daughter's head make, make me very upset. I have not seen Rick since he ruined my life, but I know that but I know that he has been in my room while I slept and I know and fear that one night he'll wake me up and see him staring at me. He's a stalker. Videos concerning the rake. In summer 2001, an amateur film created created a horror film. No. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> show them the video. No. Oh, come on. And yeah. yeah, that's the rake and his story. There is a couple of videos. Uh, what is in this creepypasta? I'll just put the creepypasta link below in the description. I do not. I think there actually is a game about this. I'm not really sure. That's why we did it. But uh, yeah, I just saw a like guy watching, like playing this video or something. But yeah, um, this has been um, Mist of Gaming episode three, part two. This is a very creepy, creepy pasta, and hope y'all liked it. Hope y'all liked it. Yes, and uh, subscribe, comment, and like. It helps a lot. And if you comment, we'll always get back to it. So, without further ado, okay. This has been Myths of Game. Peace out, y'all. See you later in our next video. Hope you like us. Click that like and button. And subscribe. Click that like button. Uh, click that like button and the subscribe. And peace out, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. And see ya.